Welcome to our lecture online. In the previous video, we showed you how to solve an equation when the equation has rational expressions. And we found the solution to the equation where x was equal to negative 4 or x being equal to 1. Both of those solutions should satisfy the equation. But when we're dealing with rational expressions, we have to be careful. First of all, we have denominators that contain the variable in this case. And so there are certain values that x cannot be because that would make the denominator negative. And if, I mean, not negative, but zero. And so we cannot divide by a zero. We cannot have zero in the denominators. So that would invalidate the solution if the solution happens to be one of those values. So we first need to validate our solutions to see if they indeed do not violate the rule that we cannot have a zero denominator. And secondly, it's always a good idea to plug the values back in the original equation to see if we indeed found the right solutions. All right, let's do the first one. So what we can say here is that x plus 2 cannot equal 0. So x plus 2 cannot equal 0 because if it's equal to 0, we have a 0 denominator, which means when we move the 2 across that x cannot equal negative 2. All right, since neither one of our solutions is negative 2, then that's not a problem. How about the next one? Well, x squared minus 4 is equal to the product of x plus 2 times x minus 2, which means in this case, x cannot equal negative 2 and x cannot equal 2. In other words, x plus 2 should not equal to 0 and x minus 2 should not equal to zero. If either one is, is true, then we have a zero denominator and then we have an invalid expression. So in this case, we can say that x should not equal negative two, which is the same condition that we found over here, but then also x should not equal two. And again, you can see that none of our solutions was those two values, negative two or two, so therefore we don't have a problem. It doesn't violate the rule that we cannot have a zero denominator. But next, just to make sure, let's see if we indeed got the right solution. We're going to plug negative 4 in for x, and then we're going to plug in 1 for x and make sure that the left side equals the right side. So let's start with x equal to negative 4. So we're going to plug that in. We get 3 divided by negative 4 plus 2 plus 6 divided by negative 4 quantity squared minus 4. And that should equal to question mark negative 1. Of course, if it doesn't, then that's not the right solution. Okay, here we have 3 divided by negative 2 plus 6 divided by, that's 16 minus 4, which is 12, equals negative 1. Okay, here, negative 3 over 2, that would be minus 1.5 plus 6 over 12 is 0 0.5, question mark, is that equal to negative 1? And of course, when we add these together, we get negative 1 equals negative 1. And so we can see that x equal negative 4 is indeed a valid solution. Next, we're going to try x equals 1. Again, we're going to plug x equals 1 into the equation for x. So that gives us on, on the first rational expression, 3 divided by 1 plus 2 plus 6 over 1 squared minus 4 equals negative 1. And again, that's question mark. So we don't know. We want to validate it. Okay, 3 divided by 3 plus 6 divided by 1 minus 4, what's negative 3, equals question mark negative 1. Simplifying, we get 1 plus 6 divided by 3 is a negative 2. That means negative 2 equals negative 1, question mark. And sure enough, negative 1 equals negative 1. So we can see that both solutions, x equals negative 4 and x equals 1, satisfy the equation. So they're both solutions to that equation. There's one more thing we probably should mention that is a cause of confusion. Notice the solution was marked as x equals negative 4 or x equals 1. Why did I not use the word and so that both are solutions to the equation? I use the word or. Well, it depends how you phrase the question, how you say the sentence. If I were to ask you, what are all the solutions to the equation, I would say x equals negative 4 and x equals 1 are both solutions to the equation. 
But if you talk about what value came out of the equation when we tried to solve it, we had the product of two binomials. Remember what we had? We had the binomial x plus 4 times x minus 1 is equal to 0. And you can only have one value at a time that satisfies that product. Either x equals negative 4, which makes this equal to 0, or x equals plus 1, positive 1, to make that equal to 0. And that's the, where the word or comes from. Once we have changed this equation into this equation, like we showed you in the previous video, then the only proper way to state the solution is that x must equal negative 4 or x must equal 1 to satisfy that equation. And that's why the word or appears instead of the word and. I'm wondering if that was one of your questions. If it was, hopefully we answered it. And that is how it's done.